Hi, my name is Brent Floyd, and I'm a solutions consultant with Palo Alto Networks, covering state governments here in the Carolinas. Wanted to run through a quick video and demonstration of something that came out of a customer conversation a week or two ago, where they asked if there was a way to block some unsanctioned browser extensions and launchers that they were noticing in their network. So I told them I'd look into it, get back with them, and this is the result of that. So in this case, uh, the specific applications they talked about were Wave Browser and One Launcher. So we're going to talk about how to determine if you have that in the network on any of your endpoints, and then how to build the behavioral detections for those programs, and then beyond that, how to put restrictions in place to keep those programs from running in your network. So to begin, I'm going to take a target endpoint via the query builder, and I'm going to ask XDR to show me all of the processes and executions that have run on a particular host over a given period of time. So in this case, I'm going to look for just the last couple of hours. We're here mid-November 2024. And the host is one that I have in the lab, and I know that the host name begins with Wesley. I'm going to run a query, and this query should show me in the last 12 hours or so all of the processes and programs and executables that have run on this particular PC. And so again, we're looking for two in particular. Um, one has been relatively pervasive, Wave Browser. Shows up with uh, very little effort hundreds of times. Um, and so with this, what I'm going to do is, oh, looks like it scrolled on me and got me actually what I needed for the second part. But for Wave Browser, I'm going to sorry, locate my application again. And investigate the causality chain to get some of the details. I'm going to open that in a new tab. And when I was running through this and, and kind of working through the logic, what seemed to be the best way to take an executable that maybe runs on different operating systems or has many different versions and hence many different potential file sizes and hashes, was to actually look at the signature in the application itself. This seemed like this was the easiest way to take um, a particular publisher, developer, and block any software. And in this case, it was not one that was otherwise sanctioned by the organization. Uh, so in this case, Wave Source Software is going to be all that I need to match on from a behavioral standpoint. And again, this is for the Wave browser. I'm also going to look for One Launcher. So here I'm going to actually build a quick filter. See if we can get this to work. One Launch EXE. Perfect. Same thing. I'm going to open up a new tab. And what I should see is that I get all of the details around this particular executable, including the signing organization or developer. So in this case, One Launch Technologies with the ability to copy out of here. So for many... I guess in many kit situations, it's easier to have a test PC where you download these bits of software after you've noticed them in the network that you want to block. So then you can also test the effectiveness of the remediation in the block. So in this case, I'm going to build some behavioral detection rules because this is really the way that we can pivot into some of the more advanced application detection heuristics. So I'm going to create what we call a behavioral indicator of compromise. In this case, I've actually built the two that I need, but we'll actually go through and build another one just to show what that looks like. But really all we're doing is saying, hey, show me the processes that are in execution that have been signed by a particular signer. So in this case, I built one for WaveSource software. So this was the Wave browser. And I can see that I've given it a name. And I should probably say detect wave process by digital signer. Created a comment, gave it a severity to make it relatively easy to filter for in the future. Severity is probably really low or medium, but this will help bump it up on the analyst radar in case we do see this unexpectedly in the future. And got the same thing for one launch. If I edit here, it's going to be the exact same process. So to build this new, I would actually add an indicator of compromise. 
based on the process. I would want to look for signed applications, in this case, signed by. Wave source software for the Wave browser. So I could come copy out of here. And what I don't know, or what I, I guess what I should say is what I tested earlier is that this will actually match based on a subset of the full string. So if I just do a signer as Wave source software, that'll work. Or I can leave the entire text string that I brought in from the copy paste out of the causality chain. So I'm going to save this once I give it a name more descriptive than Biox 77. We'll call this Wave Browser. Again, any executions of any software signed by this particular signer. So as you might imagine, this wouldn't work for Microsoft. It's not gonna work for Adobe, but where you have one-offs or where you have uh, vendors who are creating malware and grayware and adware, where you're in a block, maybe everything that they do, this is a nice, easy way to catch all of that. I'm gonna save this. Got the ability to give it some um, behavioral rules and other um, kind of pivot points. But in this case, I'm gonna say execution. I'm going to go ahead and make this a high and give it miter techniques and tactics if I choose to. In this case, nothing I really want to add there. And I can also add comments if needed. And so at this point, I have my behavioral indicators of compromise already created. So again, process, action type, execution with that signer. So the only other thing I need to do now to tie this together is to take this behavioral indicator because this is an indicator that will absolutely show up if we go in and look at our incidents, go into the alerts table, and look for what we call XDR BIOX, or Behavioral Indicators of Compromise, we will see that we have detected based on that behavioral flow that I set up earlier. If it's signed by X and it's executed on the PC, let's go ahead and detect it. In this case, this is purely a detection. We're not doing anything to restrict the application. And ultimately that was what the customer asked for. And so for us to do that, we need to add one additional bit of policy and profile. And so for us, the profile is actually what we call a restriction profile. We would want to either create a new one or ideally, maybe not even ideally, but the most easily is just look at the default. We'll save as new. Come in and call this um, app blacklist. Not going to change any of the options except for the custom prevention rules. Here I want to enable that. And I'm going to add the rules to this in a moment. I'll show you what that looks like. I'm going to create this prevention profile. Again, application blacklist, it's not applied anywhere, it's not doing any, anything yet, but it does exist as a container where I can go back into my behavioral indicators of compromise and I can add to a restrictions profile. So in this case, I'm gonna take the wave process and add it to app blacklist. Take the one launcher. Add to the app blacklist. And then the one that we just created, which is ultimately a duplicate, we'll add that in there as well. The app blacklist. And now when we go back into our restriction profiles, we can validate and make sure that everything got added. App blacklist. And we'll see that now these are prevention bioc rules. So we're going to if we detect these rules on any device that has a policy with this restriction profile, we're actually going to block the execution of that particular application. And so now all I need to do is go into my policy rule set. I've got my lab PC. Sorry, prevention policy rule set. I have my lab PC under an auto update. 
I'm going to edit this, and I'm going to change the restrictions from default to app blacklist. Next. Set my target. Um, target in this case is going to be Wesley's PC, and that's the only device, because again, I want to test this in a limited set of devices just to make sure it's working as expected. And again, the only thing that's changed is the restriction associated with this particular policy. So now when I click done and save, that policy will get pushed down to the endpoint. If the software is running, you'll see it'll take up to about five minutes to get blocked the first time. Uh, if you have user notifications enabled, they'll actually get an XDR notification saying this application has been blocked due to a behavioral indicator of compromise. Uh, the cool part is once it's caught it the first time from a XDR perspective, any subsequent launch, it will be caught immediately. So it'll never load again. And that exists for both the Wave browser as well as the uh, one launch software as well. So again, relatively simple flow. Um, determine who the signer is. So that's where we kind of work through. We looked at a host. We looked at all the processes and found the process in question. In this case, and this is all part of the causality, causality chain, but we found the process in question. We found who signed that particular process. We associated that with a detection rule that we call a behavioral indicator of compromise. Then we associated that BIOC with a restriction policy, a restriction profile. You can see that it, that's now associated with Wesley's endpoint. And then that restriction profile got associated with a prevention policy. So again, it's kind of a couple steps, but ultimately identify, behaviorally detect, create a restriction, and then add that restriction to an endpoint or an endpoint group. Again, at this point, we've done all that we need to do. We're now gonna catch any subsequent attempts to execute any software developed by WaveSore or by the One Launch Technologies company. So again, hopefully you found this valuable. Hopefully this was a good use of your time. Um, this is what I wanted to cover, and this covers the customer use case for, again, identifying those non-sanctioned applications and blocking them from running in the first place. Again, my name is Brent Floyd, Senior Solutions Consultant here out of Raleigh, North Carolina, covering state government. Thank you very much for your time today.